Hello, sixth grade artists. So this video is going to be the first of several different videos which are going to help you with creating your ancient Greek column. So if you remember, there are three different types of columns that we have talked about. We have talked about Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. And as you can see, I've got my images up on the computer in front of me. That way I can be looking at whichever type of column I am drawing at the time. You always want to make sure that you have a reference image in front of you because no matter how familiar you are with what you are drawing, you're going to need to be able to look at something to make it as accurate as you can. So on your particular Greek column project, the first thing that you'll do is some sketches. And in order to do your sketches, you're just going to have some white paper kind of like this, and you're just going to practice drawing the different types of columns. You can turn it to the side, that way you can do two on each side, and just practice so that you get a feel for how to draw the columns and start to figure out which one you like to do the best. So they can just be kind of half page. So I'm going to start with my Doric, and you can do a straight across line, kind of like the example has. I tend to like to curve my lines a little bit. That way it kind of looks like I'm looking up at the column. And then I'm going to draw that very top part, which is kind of our plate. Remember, we talk about how the Doric column is just kind of like a plate on top of a stick. So now what I'm doing is very lightly just drawing sort of the bottom of that plate. And then I could go ahead and draw my column. Or I could go ahead and add sort of another little plate. Make it a little smaller this time just to give a little bit of fanciness to that column. And once again, I'm going to draw sort of the bottom of that plate. And then I'm going to grab a ruler, and you can make your lines perfectly straight, or you can angle them just a smidge so that they're wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. That is usually what I tend to do, because what that does is give the idea of looking up at the column. Because if you've ever looked at something that's really tall, it looks narrower at the top and widest at the bottom. So then I can erase sort of the lines where I have my invisible part of the bottom of the plate. Because my column is not see-through, so I don't necessarily need to keep that line there anymore. That's actually a technique which is called draw-through, which you'll use a lot when you get to high school art. And it just helps you make sure that you're making everything proportionate. It helps you make sure that things are just going to look accurate, even as you move along in further steps. So what I'm doing right now is just bringing those sort of curved lines down on the bottom here, so that it looks like it actually wraps around. Now, some people like to then still add something to the top. You can definitely add sort of a square if you wanted to do a vertical line here and then a diagonal line that kind of goes down. You can definitely straighten those up with your ruler a little bit as well. Now, because this is my sketch, I'm not as worried about making it perfect, perfect, perfect. On the final piece, I would definitely want to make sure that I'm making things as smooth and accurate and precise as possible. For the sketch, I'm more concerned with figuring out which type of column I like to draw the best so that I know which one I want to do on my final piece, which is going to be full size. So your sketches are a little smaller, but then your final column is going to take up an entire page on its own. So then what I'm going to do is actually just add some little diagonal lines here so that it looks like that square part goes behind this sort of rounded part. So 
So that might be sort of the top of one way of doing a Doric column. And then what I can do is add in my little fluting that's here at the bottom. So I'm just going to put a little stripe. And fluting is simply just those lines that kind of, kind of make it look ribbed. So I'm just going to kind of come up here and make an upside down U. And then what I can do is with my ruler, I can just extend those lines going all the way down. So that might be a finished example. I would definitely want to clean the tops up here a little bit, just so that they're a little bit neater and tidier. But that is one example of how to draw out a Doric column. So remember, you can also use just a Google search and look up other examples to work from, but you want to make sure you have a reference image in front of you. So this is Doric, so I'm just going to label that. And then on this side, I'm going to start on an ionic example. And the ionic examples can start several different ways. I can start with a square at the top. I can start with one of these. I can start with the swirlies. But the main thing is I want to make sure that my ionic one had those sort of little rams curls. So what I'm going to do is actually start with the square, kind of like what I've got up here. So it does not have to be 100% perfect, but you do want to make sure that it looks correct there. And then what I'm going to do is just draw sort of like a weird little shape. I don't really know what to call it, but it's got two circles on either end, and it's connected with the curved line in between. And they're not going to touch. There's going to be a gap here because eventually this is going to become one swirly and this is going to become the other. And I'm going to go ahead and put my diagonal lines in here to show that this part goes behind the little swirlies. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clean this up and erase the part that I don't need so that I know which part I'm using and which part I'm not. And that's an example of sketching to sort of get the curve that you want. Because we may or may not know exactly what curve we want at the beginning, but what you can do is use sketching to sort of figure it out as you go. So now I'm just erasing sort of my sketch lines again so that I end up with something that's a little smoother to start. And then I'm just going to go ahead and continue this swirly. Again, kind of sketching it out as I go so it stays round. And I'm going to let it come to a circle here in the middle. And I'm going to go back out, smoothing out that line a little bit more. And then once again, I'll erase some of those sketch marks. 
And again, since this is still my sketch, I'm not too concerned about making it 100% perfect. I would definitely, on my final piece, want to make sure that these curls are more even, make sure that they're a little bit more circular and round. But once again, on your sketch, the main goal is to figure out which type of column you want to use for your final piece. So now at this point, looking at my reference image, I've got kind of a spot that curls down here. So it goes up and comes down to a curve in between those two spaces. Kind of like an eyebrow, <laughs> like a unibrow, really. Now here, I can actually bring this to be its own little curve and then bring this one up. So if I wanted to do that, I absolutely could. It gives it just a little more interest up there and then I can make this one have its own little curve to it instead of being quite so straight. Completely up to you exactly how detailed you make that part. But that might be sort of the beginning of an ionic example. And then I'm going to have sort of a curve that goes under all of it. But the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get my, the width of my column in there so that I don't make anything too wide. And again, I'm going to have it kind of start in the middle of this circle and get wider as it goes down. Same thing on this side. Middle of the circle, get wider as it goes down. So now I know where sort of the rest of my column is going to be. So I can go ahead and draw in sort of this line here. And then if I wanted to put one of these sort of upside down plates under this part, I could. All I would have to do is come across like this, go out a little bit beyond my column, curl back up, and then make sure once again that the roundness goes behind that column. So we're just going to kind of bring that curve and do like this with it. And then erase the part of the column that I don't see through that part. And then if I wanted to add anything here, I could. If I wanted to go ahead and add another stripe here before I get to the flute portion, I could. Or you could add another one of these. But the main thing is that you want your ionic column, if that's the one you choose, to have the swirlies to be fancier than the Doric but not as fancy as a Corinthian example would be. So now again on the flutes, I'm just going to start them the same way with my little upside down U's. Kind of trying to space them out evenly. And then I would use my ruler to connect those on down. So that might be an example of an ionic, but once again, if I wanted to add some detail in here, some little ovals and more stripes or more swirls, I absolutely could.